Brook Farm here in Massachusetts, and we're gonna check out um, one of the first like robotic dairy farms, which is modern and cool. Yep. And also we're gonna check out some animals and eat some ice cream coming from their cows. Mm-hmm. So come join us. single scoop from the Great Books Farm. It's a little bit of a walk from the parking area and they have about 30, 30 plus flavors and they do have a little bit of lactose and sorbet options, but honestly, it's definitely like a dairy farm. And what I learned from the cashier is that all the milk making these ice creams is from this dairy farm. But what happens is that they ship the milk to a dairy maker or ice cream maker in Marlboro, which is just a little bit south from here. And then they send the ice cream all the way back up here. So that's the story about this ice cream. The flavor I picked today is the salted caramel chocolate chip pretzel ice cream with a vanilla base. And it's actually, basically it's two scoops in a single scoop, something to consider. Um, you can actually get two flavors if you want, but I'm always a fan of caramel and salt put together. very rich it's very creamy and we've been outside for a little bit so it's actually melting which I just love my ice cream more melted than hard and I'm actually more of a fan of like milkshakes to be honest but it's very good I highly recommend this flavor I highly recommend stopping here and there's actually like you'll see soon in the videos but um, there's like little chickens just like walking around there's some farm animals that are super cute and a little bit of logistics is that it's actually only $3 for parking for the whole day. And there's so many places you can hike, ride your bike, go exploring, have a picnic, um, and enjoy seeing some animals and ice cream. It's a really nice spot to consider when you're out here in Massachusetts. It's a goat. That's a bee. Probably from the ice cream store. Hey, Luke. How about you? You have to put the Yeah, he's not as getting as much love. Cute. Oh.
That was so fun. Okay. You ask me? Yeah. You want me to help you? Yes, I'll give money. Yeah. You sure? Do you I'm want a okay. female? I'm okay. Wait for me. No, you take all the food. He didn't get any. I'm a little nervous. They're just gonna lick, right? Yeah, they're just gonna lick. Don't worry. Thank you. Hey, you're a bully. Not nice. There you go. There you go. Like, yeah, that's what I was saying. I agree with you. Is there more? Actually, there is. Okay, you'll get these four. No, not enough. Rejected. Okay. Here on the farm, we have a very unique partnership. The state of Massachusetts owns all of the land as well as all of the buildings, and the Duffy family own all of the animals and the farm equipment, and they run their dairy farm here. We are the only state park in the entire country that is also an active dairy farm, so that is now a fun fact that you can tell all of your friends whenever you go anywhere. I think it's pretty cool, I tell everyone. <laughs> but that's a partnership that goes back quite some time, back to the year of 1939. There was a lovely man named Farnham Smith who came over and he decided he wanted to start a dairy farm. Farnham started off with around 10 acres of land, but he expanded buying all the surrounding properties he could, and he expanded to a thousand acres, and that is how much land we have here today. Farnham was what we call a gentleman's farmer, so farming wasn't his main source of income. He had a lumber business over in Concord, where he made most of his money. Farming was more of a pastime for him and something he really enjoyed. He had a special love for dairy cows. His, his favorite dairy cow was named Prospera. She lived to be 20 years old. She wow. lived from the years 1949 to 1969, and she's actually buried here on the farm. She Aww. won many awards for her dairy production, and she was a very prized cow. We still love her very much. If you'd like to see her headstone and want to take a walk later, if you walk down this path, you can see her mm. little headstone. Say hello to Prospera. We still love her. Great. But in 1974, Farnham decided that he was all done with his farming expedition, and he was ready to move on to bigger and better things. So he sold his land to the state of Massachusetts for $4.3 million. Of course, now the land is worth about 10 times that amount. <laughs> Otherwise, someone has to eat it. It's one or the other. Wow. It's not bad. People think it smells bad. I think it smells good. But I also work on a farm, so maybe don't believe anything I say. <laughs> but with all that food, we need somewhere to keep it. Most people expect that we would put it in these big buildings right here. Do you guys know what those are called? Silos. Silos. So we actually don't use these silos. They're empty. We keep them for the ambiance because they look farmish. And, you know, we like to look cool. <laughs> but we actually use what's called a trench silo. Right behind you over this hill. A trench silo is kind of like a big divot cut out in the mm. ground. And the reason we use it is because, one, it's much more efficient. One trench silo holds five standing silos worth of food, so we get a lot oh. more bang for our buck. But it's also why this machine back in 2011, but since then we've expanded to two machines. So in these machines, one is like they're all automated. There are no humans involved. There are no people behind the scenes telling the cows they have to come in. The cows come in to get milk by themselves, and they come in because they want to, whenever they want to. Milk is, and she won't be let in here unless she's actually 
ready to be milked. Sometimes the cows try and sneak in just to get a little snack, even if they don't need to be milked. And today I'm going to go for a fresh day. Because we're going to milk the meat and we're reading the time. If they're ready to be milked, just check over to the left. If they're not ready to be milked, they send them to the right, back to the other end of the barn, and we'll have them in here. Mm. So the machine knows everything. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. And if you guys are ready, the next section we'll head into is our smart bar. Our smart bar is where we house our one or two small active baby cows. We're one of the most so cool, eh? They're very, very friendly. If they don't feel like being touched, they'll pull their head away from you. Just identify that, put them on Twitter. Ready, Linko. Little horn. Yeah, their eyes are beautiful. For me to film you? No. No? The tongue is so rough, right? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> it's so rough, right? Got my whole arm. Yeah, because they like the salt. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. Like, sorry. Like soft. I was scratching. Like I got more salt. No? Finish? Yeah, you got more salt. So strong, right? Yeah. yeah.